Welcome to This Is My Architecture. This week we are in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm Benjamin from AWS. Today I'm joined by Vladimir from AppNext. Thank you for joining me, Vladimir. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we dig into your architecture, tell me a little bit about what AppNext does. AppNext is a leading mobile discovery platform, helping millions of users to experience apps at the right time at the, through the day. Okay, so a mobile platform, many, many users around the world. I imagine this produces a ton of events. How, what kind of scale are we talking about? Right now we are talking about 700 million of users daily. Okay, and, and this is really the basis of your data platform and that needs to, I imagine, consume, store, and process all of these data events. Um, and from what I understand, y your platform kind of evolved uh, over time. Um, tell me kind of where did, you, where, where did you start? What was the starting point? We've started with a classic OLTP plus uh, all of architecture. Okay. We've uh, had our uh, application servers writing all this data into MySQL, running on the C2. And uh, after that, we have uh, some uh, ETL processing running on the uh, EC2 instance that was copying the data and transforming it into Redshift. Okay, so really the beginning point is where a lot of customers are, their ending point is, is a, a healthy split between um, your, your transactional and analytics uh, data stores. Um, so why did you need to move beyond that? Why wasn't that sufficient? Uh, after we reached a point of uh, something like uh, 400 uh, million events loaded daily into MySQL, we started to see performance issues and uh, scaling issues with uh, MySQL database. Right, so it's relational, that's the trick. It doesn't really scale as easily. So, um, so ran into scale issues, what was the next step beyond that? How, do you, how did you progress? We've decided to move all these uh, big data streams that were loaded into MySQL to somewhere else and uh, load them directly to the Redshift. So we've decided to use uh, Kinesis Firewalls for this job. So on application servers, we're just writing all these big data streams into Kinesis Firewalls, which was writing them to S3, and after that, they, they were loaded to Redshift. Okay, so right off the bat, you kind of split the big data elements, which shouldn't really be stored in a transactional database to begin with, put them in, in a good place to, to, to store them in the beginning, gets dumped into S3, loaded back into Redshift. So that's a good move. I imagine at that point, your scale or your requirements from the MySQL reduced. Yeah, because we didn't need all this uh, compute power and this uh, EBS uh, volumes that we were using. We were using provision types volumes for these uh, MySQL instances. We've uh, just moved our uh, storage from uh, provision types type to GP2. Immediate, immediate cost savings. Yeah, Remove. we've uh, reduced uh, the cost by something like 30%. Okay, and I see there are other boxes here, so I know that wasn't the end game. What, what was the next step beyond that? How did you, what was the next point that you had that you figured, okay, we need a new tool here? So after we moved all this data from MySQL to Redshift, at Upnex we have several teams that are querying the data in addition to analysts. There's a QA team, a integration team, data team. So they all started to query the data in Redshift. And this wasn't an uh, analytical uh, querying well, data warehouse queries. It was just select star queries that uh, were running on Redshift. And uh, on the time when we have version release or uh, configuration changed, all, the, all of these users were running uh, concurrent queries on Redshift. So this is really workloads that were hitting Redshift because that's where the data was, but it wasn't really a data warehouse type query or a query that's optimized for data warehouse. So, um, so you decided to peel that off? Yes, because it exhausted our Redshift cluster, it, uh, the queries was very, very slow. We decided to move all this ad, uh, ad hoc querying out from Redshift to somewhere else. Okay. And because we already had the data saved in the three, we decided to use the tenant to query this, in this data directly. Okay, so super simple. The data's already there. Just add Athena, write your queries, and then immediately, I imagine, reduce the amount of concurrency on Redshift. Yeah. And more importantly, pull away the queries that aren't really effective on a data warehouse. Yes. Uh, cool. So, how do we get to using EMR? So, at, this, at the point when we reached 10 billion events loaded daily into Redshift, we had our aggregation processes, all of them running on Redshift. And uh, with the more data we've loaded, the processes became more and more slow. So, something like uh, three to four five hours for uh, each process. So, we decided to move all these aggregation processes out from Redshift because it became very slow and because we were loading uh, more and more data to Redshift, we needed to resize the Redshift cluster more often and all the 
each time you reset the cluster, it becomes in read-only mode. So all the data we were loading from, uh, from app service to Redshift was, wasn't loading on this time. And we needed to manually reload it from S3 and also to rerun all of our aggregation processes that weren't running on this time once again. So again, sort of, you were running things that you could run on Redshift, but that's not the right place for them yes. going forward. So what's the solution to that? We've decided to use Spark on okay. AML. So what it is we're doing, once again, because we had already all this data saved in S3 in the JSON format, we were just consuming it by our AML clusters, running all this analytical aggregation processing there and saving the results as a parquet format, which is a columnar format, and uh, it's much more efficient for query, analytical querying. I know from other customer conversations that Parquet will reduce the query processing time on Athena. It, did you see the benefits yeah, of yes. that as well? Um, was Parquet used now just for Athena? No, in addition to Athena, we're running uh, queries directly from a 3 with uh, Redshift Spectrum. So it is available in the same Redshift clusters that we have all this uh, data saved from MySQL and other places, now available and so for querying a 3 data. Okay, so more effective and again, cost effective, reducing the load over the compute nodes that don't really need to have, they don't have to do this. Um, so, so this is really cool. I, I really like this story. And, and I, I think the reason why is because it kind of tells the story how when we're thinking about a data platform, there's maybe this illusion that there's, uh, there's a nirvana state where the, this data needs to live in this place. And if you just separate OLAP from OLTP, um, everything would be all right. And, and I think what, what your story is telling is, well, no, the, the, the data events and the scale continues to grow. And the consumers change in their behavior. And now they want more because it's available. And so you continuously need to evolve your platform and find the right tool uh, for the right job, and that's an ongoing thing. So I think this really tells that well. And, and so thank you, and thank you for sharing that. Thank and you. thank you for watching This Is My Architecture. <laughs>